Uh, my name is Tim Taylor. I operate Crossroad Farm in Post Mills, Vermont, and I farm approximately 50 acres of mixed vegetables. We have um, greenhouse tomatoes. We grow approximately 15, 16,000 pounds of those. Uh, uh, quite a big bedding plant business now, and in the field crops out here, we grow just a uh, about everything. Uh, one time we even tried artichokes one year. Uh, we have, um, as far as weed strategies, uh, I think probably the one I focus on the most is to keep my corn crop the cleanest I can. I use that as a way to come into my next fields because it, in my operation it takes up a great deal of the uh, acreage. I like to let no weeds go to seed there. So we'll actually, but we use no herbicide there. I want to stress that right from the start. We never have. I've always cultivated it. Uh, I use a single row cultivator. I use a, a two row cultivator, uh, the rolling Lilliston type cultivators. And I use some blind cultivation with rotary hose. This is a rotary hoe, which we use in uh, corn. It comes in all different lengths. This is actually a very small one been cut down so it does two rows of corn. We use it for blind cultivation. Uh, after we've sowed the corn approximately anywhere from four to five to oh perhaps a week to ten days later depending upon the soil temperature and the time of the year we'll come in and we just run this right across the top of the crop blindly. Uh, this is usually pre-emergent or just as it's spiking up. I use this in corn, I've used it in peas, and in beans. Uh, it will get about approximately 50 to 60 percent of the weeds. Uh, it will get approximately, oh, maybe 2 to 3 percent of the corn, or the crop you're trying to actually grow. Uh, depending upon the, your timing, uh, you can actually come in when the crop is uh, not so much corn, but peas and beans when the crop is actually up and starting to leaf out. Uh, it's one of the pros and the cons of, of this. It allows you a little more time for more finer cultivation because it does reduce the uh, pressure, the weed pressure for a period of time, and yet it doesn't get them all and you still need to do cultivation. I find I still need to do uh, single row cultivation as well. Uh, each sprocket here is spring-loaded. It'll bear the full weight of the unit. Uh, you can get a little nervous sometimes when you use it because it does sink into the ground quite a ways. I find that I'm quite safe as long as I keep my corn planted at two-inch level. Corn planted up a little in the one-inch zone will tend to be dug up a little more often. And one of the problems with this tool is that picks up all my loose plastic from my crops like melons and zucchini and squash. I don't know if it's exactly a downsize. It gets it out of the field, which I do want to get it out. The other primary cultivation tool I use is a slightly modern version of two-inch shovels. We call these the Curbco bat wings, and they're for single row cultivation, although I have seen them used in, in other applications in two and three and four row cultivation. What they consist of is a series of old car bumpers that have been fashioned into these bat wings for throwing dirt. Uh, some of the things I, I really like about it are if I have some very mature weeds and them come in quite late, uh, it will it cuts under them and cuts them quite effectively and rips them up. Uh, it's quite effective where I do have some witchgrass because again it rips it up. Well here we have the budding basket weeder and what we do here is we plant all our lettuce is grown from, is transplanted. We do, do, do nothing from seed into the field. It's all transplanted and it's a two row bed system. And a week after transplanting approximately, we'll come in with the budding basket here, which is ground driven off of this chain here. And we'll, we can go approximately, oh, 
just about as fast as you'd want to drive it <laughs> on the open field, uh, five miles an hour or so. Uh, it doesn't, its advantage is that it won't throw dirt into the lettuce. It'll just, it moves in this manner and kicks up the weed seeds, cultivating at about one inch, depending upon where I set it in the ground. Wait about a week because we get a little bit of germination, but we don't want to wait too long because we don't want the weeds to be too big. The advantage of the belly mount is that it does not wander. The, culti the cultivating tool doesn't wander in the field as it would behind the tractor if it was placed behind the tractor. I'm able to view straight down at the, at the uh, a single row. Uh, I can't see both rows, but I can see one row and I just uh, can see exactly where I'm placing the tool. Absolutely exactly. If I daydream a little bit and it wanders off, I can catch it real quick, whereas when it's behind me, in the case of some of the three-point hitch tools that I use for cultivation, it, it tends to wander a little more and I tend not to have quite the same control that I would have. I wanted to stress this. I own two of these Kubotas and this is mounted here all year long. I don't take this off. It's not difficult to mount. It just has four bolts here and four bolts on the other side, but I have it set just perfectly the way I want it, and I honestly believe you should have a tractor for each piece of cultivating equipment you have, uh, because the downside on all cultivation is the setup time. What we do is the, the basket is spaced six inches apart, and I'll do two passes here. The first pass, I'll be nursed right up next to the radishes down one side. I'll turn around come back in the same bed up against the other side as close as I can go. In that way I get within usually an inch to two inches of the crop even though I have six inch spacing on the basket. Here's the Perfecta field cultivator. This is something new for me that I'm just experimenting this year with. I hope it's going to be uh, reduce my reliance upon a rotavator uh, in my field bed preparation. Normally, what uh, my present practice is to uh, subsoil in the spring, put the subsoil on a two shank subsoiler, run around the entire 30, 40 acre farm subsoiling, and then gradually manure and rotavate and make beds as I need them. Uh, and then in the fall, once again, use the rotavator to incorporate the residue. And I have some concerns about soil structure, and I'm trying to uh, look for alternatives to that, uh, in especially the bed preparation in the spring, and also, in, again, in for which grass control 